Hi everyone and welcome to the very first episode of Octopus Builds. My name is Bob Walker and I am the Technical Director of Customer Success here at Octopus Deploy. Now since working since I started working at Octopus Deploy I've helped a number of different customers configure their Octopus Deploy instance as well as helped uh, as well as I was a, actually a customer of Octopus Deploy before we even started at Octopus Deploy. And I've had a chance to configure a number of different things. And so what I want to do with this series is walk you through how I would set up a demo or how I would set up a project from scratch. And so what you're going to be seeing here is I'm going to be working as a fictional DevOps engineer, uh, same name, Bob Walker, I can't confuse myself. And what I'm going to be doing is helping out the brand new project called Trident. And so this is a brand new project at a fictional company called Octo Pet Shop. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be starting from scratch. As you can see, I have, a, uh, I have an empty space. And then I'm going to build it up from there. Uh, I'm going to add in different features and functionality. Uh, you might actually see me make some mistakes. Um, and that might be intentional or might be unintentional. Um, if you have any questions, you can always drop a comment. Uh, below and I'll be happy to respond to that. Uh, but the idea behind this is just to kind of show you how a project could naturally evolve within Octopus Deploy depending on your experience, depending on your expertise or anything along those lines, in between, anything in between by, by that. So what I want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and get started. So let's talk a little bit about Octo Pet Shop. So Octo Pet Shop is a fictional company and it has been around for 20 years and they have been deploying their own basically their own applications uh, all written in .NET and now they're starting to explore other types of technologies and features out there uh, but they have been around for quite some time they have a couple hundred developers they have about a let's say a couple dozen different development teams and they have separate teams for DBAs, separate teams for QA, web admins and DevOps, and so on and so forth. And they have a number of different standards. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm first going to be following the existing standards that are already here. Um, and that is environments. Let's talk about environments first, because that's the very first thing you have to set up. It even shows you in our getting started guide. So the very first environment is what's going to be initially deployed to. So in this particular case, we have development. Um, in Octo Pet Shop's case, a development is used by the various developers, and they use that as a way to kind of test out changes uh, without anyone else coming in and messing around with stuff. So it is their environment. They are running their VMs within that environment. Now, when I say environments, it's kind of a, a group of different machines. A very common environment that almost everyone uses is production. That is a probably the most common thing you hear about. Like, hey, I just deployed this to production. Hey, I just deployed this to, you know, and just push it out to production or anything like that. Um, but before that, for almost everyone else, they're not deploying straight to production unless they have like two people. <laughs> most companies, especially larger companies, they're going to have multiple environments before something can make it to production because there's various different levels of stability as well as testing that's going to occur at each environment. At development, it's not going to be very stable, whereas, say, a QA environment used by the QA team or business owners or business analysts, that's going to be much more stable. And the expectation is this is something that the QA team can use without uh, worrying about the development team coming, coming in and messing everything up. And so typically we see things go to development, it cycles through until it becomes a little bit more stable, then it gets pushed up to QA. Now, after that, I commonly see staging. Um, or you can call it integration, or you can call it pre-production, whatever the case may be. And that's typically a mirror of production. So if I have two servers in production for this application, I'm going to have two servers in staging. Uh, oftentimes, I actually see companies go through and they'll make copies of data from production down to staging after they sanitize a whole bunch of data. But that way, they can kind of load test different things. They can verify how everything's going to wor work with the current version of code. So staging is typically uh, production minus one version. 
Um, it's as close to production as you can get. You can test it. You can test bug fixes in production. Maybe there's a performance problem or anything like that. It's a really good way to test something out without actually pushing a production and causing any sort of downtime. So I have these four environments. Now I want to need is I need some deployment targets. For this series, um, I could get very quickly bogged down talking about uh, Windows targets or Linux targets, Macs, uh, go to Azure, do web apps, AWS, maybe do some ECS clusters or Kubernetes. My concern is that's going to kind of muddy the waters, especially for what I'm trying to do with this particular series. So what I'm really going to do is I'm just going to focus in on cloud regions. So cloud regions, it's just a way to kind of, it's kind of a pseudo target, if you want to say it. It's, it's a good way that I, I use to test out different scripts or different uh, deployment processes or anything like that. Now, when you have a target, you're going to give it a name. So I'm just going to call this Trident Web 01. And you give it an environment, so D. And I recommend following whatever naming conventions you've already established within your company. Um, I want to get too hung up on naming otherwise. Uh, just do something that makes a lot of sense. Now, roles is something that's actually rather important. So think of a role as a tag for a server. And some folks I see do something like, hey, I'm just going to do web server, especially for someone who's just starting out. Now, that's OK, but I much prefer something like this, Trident Web. So I know exactly who is using this particular target. Um, and what will happen is this shows up when I look at the deployment targets screen as what environment as well as what tag is associated with it. So I'm going to add in a few more cloud regions to kind of flesh this out. Test, oops, Trident Web 01. Aha. So used to doing test, not QA. Ha, ah, whoops. So let's go ahead and add the add the the role and let's go ahead and let's keep on adding in all the various things. Now with staging, I'm gonna ha have two web servers in production. So I want to make sure I have two web servers in staging because again it should be a mirror of what we have in production. Um in a in a perfect world, things would be uh mirrored all the way down to test and even development, but uh that's not always what we find out. Web 02. Sometimes it's a cost thing. Sometimes it's a resource allocation. There's a finite amount of uh, compute resources that's out there. Maybe in your self-hosted data center, or you're trying to keep your cost down for cloud for uh, cloud costs like Azure or AWS. You know, it. Everyone has their reasons as to why they don't have a exact match all the way down in test and development or QA and development. It's whatever floats your boat. Um, it's whatever makes the most sense for you. I, I, I wouldn't get too hung up on this. Octopus Deploy will work just fine either way. Ups P, Trident, Web02. So what I want to do is I want to show you how Octopus Deploy is going to select the infrastructure. So when I want to go to, uh, let's say I'm going to go to development. So it looks at the environment. In addition to that, within the project, we're going to define a step that's going to target that particular role, Trident Web. So it's going to say, give me all of the servers that match these two things, development and Trident Web. And then from there, um, it's going to pick those targets. So in this case, I only have one target. However, if I were to say, go to production, you can see it's going to pick two targets. It's, this is a nice, easy way to see what's going to be picked and what's not going to be picked and everything like that. One nice thing about cloud regions is they're always going to show up as healthy, so that's a great thing. Um, you don't have to worry about health statuses or anything along those lines. All right, so we have my target. I have my targets. I have my environments. It's time to create my first project. So let's go ahead and let's call this the Trident project because that's what we're going to be building out. Um, for the remainder of this series. So a couple of things. Let's go ahead and let's define our deployment process. What I like to do, especially when I'm standing up a new Octopus Deploy instance, is I like to come in and just verify that everything is working. And I, I want to do that in the easiest way possible. And the easiest way to do that, excuse me, I kind of jumped right to that, is picking a step that just runs a script. I'm not going to try to do anything else. I just want to run a simple script. Um, when we get into future episodes, we'll be talking about packages um, as well as community steps, built-in steps, uh, everything else in between. But for right now, I just want to run a script. So I'm just going to say verify connectivity. 
I hope that's how you spell it. We will, if I got it wrong, I apologize. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to de determine, hey, when, where is this going to run? Um, I'm just going to run this on each deployment target. And I want to go ahead and write host hello world. So what this is going to do is just going to print out the text, hello world. Nothing complex behind that at all. So let's go ahead and save this. And we can create a release. Got an initial version. I like starting out with 001. Um, that just shows everyone, hey, this is it's kind of the first phases of this deployment process. We'll, we'll change it up once we start adding in packages and everything like that. But for now, let's just verify all the connectivity is working. So it's going to, it picked D Trident Web 01, which is what I expect it to do. It, behind the scenes, the regions are actually running on dynamic workers. Uh, but for this one, I, I, I already have everything all pre-ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and it prints it out. Hello world, happy days. Now from here, I can go ahead and push this up to QA. Now within here, I kind of glossed over this screen. Um, and this is something that you're going to definitely make notice of in the future. But um, if you want to know what what targets are going to be picked, you can extend this out. It'll tell you out all kinds of different things. In addition, you can come in here, you can exclude steps. I only have one step, so I'm not going to do it. But you could also come in here and you can schedule this to run a lot later. So a very common thing I hear about from our customers is they want to do something like, hey, I want to schedule this to run at, say, 7.15 p.m. And this is how you would do it. Um, you come in here and you can say, I'm going to go ahead and run this later. Now, I'm not going to make everyone wait three hours and 23 minutes uh, to do this. That's a little insane. So I'm just going to go ahead and push this out now. And what I want to do is I just want to push this all the way to production, just so you can kind of see how everything is working. And while we're doing that, let's go ahead and close this. Awesome. So what I'm showing you right now, this will work for pretty much any version of Octopus Deploy released in the last four years. Uh, and that's kind of the idea behind this is I really want to focus in on functionality that's available to everyone, um, especially when you're just getting started and you're kind of figuring out how everything works together because there are a lot of different terms and f features and functionality. Um, as you can see, I'm deploying to now both of those servers. So Trident Web 01, Trident Web 02. Uh, because those were the two servers that were in staging. And then finally, let's push this out to production. And it should go pretty quick. We should be done in a few seconds. Of course, I say that, then it takes a lot longer. <laughs> it's just how the world works, I guess. <laughs> All right, so we have both of these done. Awesome. So let's come back to our overview screen for project overview. And you can see we've pushed out to everything. Awesome. Now, you might be wondering, what's next? What else can we do with this? Um, the first thing I want to do before we end this episode is I'm not a really big fan of that logo. I think it could get a little bit more pizzazz, especially to reflect what we're going to be working on. So I already have something picked out. Now, you might be wondering how I picked the term Trident. Well, it seems like every image that I see with an octopus, especially when you start talking about, hey, what captures octopus, it always seems like they have some sort of trident, and it's always super metal looking. Well, this is the most uh, metal looking trident I could find inside of uh, the icons that are provided by Octopus Deploy. And let's get this a nice green color to it. And I like to do this just to add a little bit of pizzazz. Um, but the big reason why I picked Trident was I just needed to have some name that I could say a lot without uh, stumbling over anything. And this kind of just looked nice. It does kind of look like I'm about ready to eat something but with this logo. But hey, it's a fork. That's the intention behind it. It's not metal like Trident. Uh, maybe in the future I can find another cool image to, uh, to upload it to. So, uh, But that's it for this first episode. In future episodes, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to expand upon this deployment process because right now I have something very, very simple, as well as talk about variables, talk about everything else on top of that. So I hope you enjoy this first episode. Thank you very much, and I look forward to talking to you in the next episode. Bye.